Oh yeah! Welcome! So what I'm trying today, for the first time, I'm creating my own tag challenge. And because, as most of you will know, I love music and I love collecting music on various different formats, I wanted to create a music tag. And if I say so myself, I think I've come up with a pretty good idea. One for a tag that isn't too long, but just four simple tag prompts, questions, whatever you would call them. And I think the more people who do it will learn about each other and learn about our collections. And um, I'm gonna get things kicked off, seeing as how it is my tag challenge. And the tag challenge is what I've titled Music Milestones. So there are four separate milestones. There is the year you were born, the year you started school, the year you left school, graduated school, however you want to say it, and the year you turned 21 years of age. And the object is to pick an album, preferably, it can be on any format, CD, vinyl, record, cassette, 8-track, mini disc, whatever, and just show that from your collection and it uh, was released at least originally in the year in which corresponds to the tag so pretty simple i think now then for those who want to join in and i'll talk about actual specific tags at the end of the video so stay tuned for that for those who want to join in if you don't have many albums but you're more of a singles person you collected more singles rather than albums and that's easier for you that's fine you can do singles you can mix it up albums singles even use things like videos you know vhs tapes or dvds of music acts that you've collected if that be the case if you would prefer to do that it's entirely up to you as long as you're showing something musically related in your collection from the year that corresponds to each tag now if there's any of you who want to do this and you've really got nothing physical no physical items in your music collection even though it's not stuff that I tend to enjoy and approve of for want of a better term um, you could show something that's in your digital library you know iTunes or however you may have bought mp3s in the past and even and you know it pains me to say it a little bit but you could even show stuff from certain years that are pertinent to you from say your streaming libraries you know Spotify Apple Music, Deezer, etc. I think it'd be best to do this with physical music, music that you can actually hold up, but I don't want to exclude anyone from joining in, and if there is those of you out there who only have music digitally, or only stream music now, then uh, I'd still love for you to be involved. But I'm going to get going, and the first prompt, the first tag, I don't know what to call it, that um, I chose for this music milestones, the first milestone, if you will, is the year you were born so for that I was struggling I didn't have an awful lot from the year I was born and then I realized that this album came out the year I was born it is Sandinista by The Clash this came out in 1980 this actual edition is obviously on mini disc and this is a reissue of course this came out in 1999 I'm talking about original years of issue years of release so this was 1980, originally on CBS Records, this is a Columbia mini disc, and that was a Sony company by that point. Nice little two mini disc set here, really nice mini disc set, a really nice one to get hold of if you're collecting mini disc, but uh, the album itself, this originally came out in 1980, I think it was The Clash's fourth album. Originally on CBS Records it was a triple album, in fact The Clash, them being a socially conscious band. They said they would take fewer royalties so that this Sandinista triple album, released on three LPs at the time, could be sold at a cheaper price so that all their fans could still afford it. Which is a really great thing to do really because if you think about Britain, certainly in the early 1980s, there was a lot of poverty and hardship and the class, like I say, they were very aware of that. They were very politically minded and um, they didn't want their fans to have to spend an extortionate amount of money 
because they wanted to release a triple album. And it got good reviews at the time, Sandinista. Very eclectic album. There again, with a lot of things like this, the Beatles' White Album's always an example that I think of. When bands release a double album, or in this case a triple, although this is only on two mini discs, but originally it was three LPs, there's always some critics who are saying, well, that'd be a much better record if they scrapped all the filler and just brought it out as a single LP. But there's so much on here to enjoy. I mean, 18 tracks on disc one, 18 on disc two. Like I say, it's really eclectic as well. Although The Clash originally started out as a punk band, by this time you would call them more post-punk, almost indie in a way. But there's so many other different genres that they're really getting into. Reggae and ska and dub, they are three that are very prominent on this. Um, they're really sort of getting into that sort of scene by this point. There's some rockabilly on here. I've not listened to this album in quite a while. It must be getting on for a couple of years or so, which is when I bought it. Uh, but I do remember just what an amazing album it is, just for variety more than anything. Yeah, it might have been a better album overall, had a lot of the sort of filler and less good tracks not been included, but they wanted to release a triple album in 1980, the year of my birth. And Sandinista has gone down in history as being ultimately successful large project for The Clash. This is an album released in 1980. So the next year that we move on to for Music Milestones is the year you went to school. And I started school, as in primary school, which is um, in this country really young children, sort of four, five years to 11. Um, I know in different countries you will have different education systems. But I started school in, I think, late 1984. And an album that came out, I think September 84, if my research is correct, is an album that I've got in my collection and which I really like. It is Some Great Reward by Depeche Mode. Now this is obviously on CD, although to be totally specific, this is actually a CD and DVD set. There is the Collector's Edition CD and we also have a DVD here that has a great documentary on and also it has the album in DVD audio, which I think is like surround sound or something. This was Depeche Mode's fourth album. They'd released one a year since 1981. And they were a big band, popular band. I think the tide was starting to turn relating to how they were thought of by critics and the music press at this point. I think they're finally shaking off this image as a bit of a teeny bopper act, which I don't think they ever were. I think they're always more credible. They were on a credible indie label, Mute Records, and they wrote all their own stuff, played all their own stuff. You know, yes, they released catchy pop songs in the early 80s, but there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean you're not a credible or cool act. And I think the singles on here really represent Depeche Mode's growth. They're starting to have a harder industrial sound, and People Are People, which is probably the best known single on here, that definitely represents a more harder industrial edge. All the singles on here, Master and Servant, the brilliant Blasphemous Rumours, one of my favourite Depeche Mode singles. You can see the band sort of growing and maturing when you listen to this. And, you know, I think their audience in America was starting to take shape at this point as well. But I like this album. Is it my favourite Depeche Mode album? Probably not, but it is a great one that came out in 1984 the year I started school, and it really represents a great synth band who are just growing and finding new sounds. They were using sampling of everyday sort of sounds. Yeah, fascinating stuff, and this is a nice little set as well on CD and DVD. The third milestone is the year you left school. And for me that was 1996 and that's a really important year in my music collecting because I would say 1996 and 1997 together I bought more music than at any other point in my life, perhaps even up till now. And an album I'm going to show you from the year I left school in 1996 is not one that I had at the time, my brother had it at the time, he had it on cassette and I only got this edition quite recently. This is All Eyes On Me by Tupac Shakur. 
lovely four LP set this I think this was reissued in 20 I thought it was 2016 but it's got a 2017 copyright on here but um, I'm assuming it's probably some sort of 20th anniversary thing given this originally came out in 1996 as you can see if I can get it in shot very well it's a lovely gatefold sleeve there I unboxed this in a video on my channel not that long ago at some point um, earlier this year and I got this for a really good price from Amazon but that's not the point the point is to talk about the music so in 1996 this came out obviously it has gone down as an absolutely legendary and iconic hip-hop album because this was the last album that was released by Tupac before his passing in that was September 96 I think in Las Vegas and um, this was also the first album that he released that was on Death Row Records. Um, Death Row, the very controversial hip-hop record label that had associations with gangs in Compton, California. And of course, he has his big credit there. The head of Death Row and the executive producer for this album is the infamous Shug Knight. But as an album goes, hip-hop, it's, it's really raw. Tupac, he's not long out of prison. He's angry, he's angry at the East Coast guys, he's angry at Puffy and his former friend Notorious B.I.G. He's got Shug Knight and others in his ear kind of encouraging his paranoia. It's a fascinating record to listen to really, it's like a social document really. But it's also a brilliant hip hop album, you can't deny it. Dr. Dre did a lot of production on here, so you know the quality is there. Yes, I mean, this is 1996 in a bottle. Not literally in a bottle, but uh, 1996 encapsulated for me, really. Even though at that point I was listening to a lot of Britpop and guitar bands, and of course I was always listening to New Order and other electronic stuff like Pet Shop Boys, Depeche Mode, but I'd listened to that pretty much all my life. I didn't really listen to a lot of hip-hop, because for me that was like my brother's thing, and uh, I only really started appreciating gangster rap and other subgenres of hip hop when I was older in more adult years. But from 1996, two packs, all eyes on me, a stone cold classic. And the final tag, the final milestone, is the year you turned 21. And for me, that was 2001. And I had a few albums that I could choose from from 2001. And the one I decided to go for in the end was a little bit of a surprising choice for me because it's not one of my favourite albums, but I think just as what it is and the edition that I've got, it represents something a little bit interesting in music history. And I've chosen 2001's Know Your Enemy by Manic Street Preachers. This was Manic Street Preachers' sixth album, I believe. Um, they've been going since the late 80s, early 90s. And the reason I chose this, partly because I thought it'd be interesting to show another mini disc in this video. It would have been nice to show a different audio format for each release, but unfortunately I haven't got any cassettes that were released in 2001. But this is an interesting mini disc for me because this is the newest mini disc, <laughs> which sounds weird saying it, that I've got in my collection. This is, I think, the only mini disc I have that was released originally in 2001 because Sony basically stopped pressing mini discs in that year or it may have been 2002 but there was so little coming out in 2001 it might as well have been that year I've got an extensive collection and I do have videos about them in my music collecting playlist but most mini discs as in pre-recorded ones for sale to the public were manufactured between I think 1992 and 2000 they were like the mini disc years really it's quite rare to get a 2001 md as for the actual album it's okay i like manic street preachers and i did collect all their other mini disc albums um but this one is not my favorite of theirs i think my favorite album of theirs is probably still generation terrorists from i think 1991 uh, but this one released 10 years later Know Your Enemy, it's got some singles on it that I remember very well. Let Robeson Sing, Ocean Spray, Manic Street Preachers, as you know, a three-piece from Wales. They're originally a four-piece, but Richie Edwards, of course, the guitarist, he went missing in, I think that was 1994 or 95. 
and obviously he's been presumed dead for quite some years now. Really interesting band with a really fascinating backstory, particularly pertaining to Richie Edwards. And this is a decent album. There again, it's one that I've not listened to in quite some time, but um, like everything else in my music collection, I will eventually get round to listening to and appreciating these once again and you know there's only so many hours in the day really and for all i know i may end up enjoying it more the second time than i did the first that does happen a lot with me and albums some albums i bought originally back in the day sort of the 1990s didn't really like them that much but i just bought them because i was a collector and then i've bought them or listened to them again sort of 20 odd years later and found i've really enjoyed them so even though i don't think my tastes have changed dramatically i think my tastes have kind of been fluid somewhat and um, i'm certainly receptive to all types of music but from 2001 the year i turned 21 manic street preachers know your enemy so there we are uh, that was a longer tag than i expected you don't have to talk for as long as i did about these things if you want to go through this as quickly as possible yeah this is one this is two blah 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 then you know that's entirely up to you so actual tags i'm gonna tag you all essentially i've spoke to a few people in my small youtubers chat group and some of you have shown an interest in doing this so that's fantastic but basically if you've got to this point in the video and you're still watching it and you're thinking that's quite an interesting tag music milestones i'd like to do that then i am tagging you right now I'm just not going to name you by name because I could be talking to anyone here but I would love anyone as many people as possible to do this essentially if I can mention some specific names simply because they're over in America and Canada and I don't get to talk to them sort of privately but they are music related channels and collecting channels that I really like and um, it would be a massive honor if these three channels would take up this tag challenge and they've been Steve Carlson off the beaten tracks and the vinyl guru if you three are interested in this then um, that would be marvelous i will mention you by name and even if you've not got the time or the inclination to be involved in this music milestones tag i will leave links for those three channels down in the description as they are well worth checking out if you're into music collecting particularly vinyl collecting but that is going to be it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this something a little bit different. A music milestones tag that I've started that I hope will have a little bit of traction as time goes on. So please get involved and um, I look forward to seeing what you all say and the stuff that you're showing from your collections from these particular years. I'm going to go now and I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for my next music related video. Cheers everyone. See ya! <laughs>